So today I want to talk about L, which is a lightweight functional prompt engineering framework. It comes with a very useful set of tools if you find yourself working with large language models and want to reduce the amount of boilerplate code you're writing. That sounds a lot like Langchain, but it's even less code than that, I promise. Um, and it comes with a really nice set of tools for monitoring and inspecting what you're doing. So with all that said, let's get started. So L, this is something that's written by William Gus, who used to be a researcher at OpenAI, who might still be a researcher at OpenAI, I can't quite tell from his Twitter profile, but it's a really cool way to query large language models. So let's jump straight into the code here. Um, I've got an example that is an OpenAI completion, and you can see we have to write this boilerplate, we have to write this all the time if we are uh, making queries to open AI. I've just got a helpful, helpful assistant and it's just going to write me a poem for a developer named Ian. So if I were to go off and run that and we can see we get our little poem back there and it should, you can see it's included my name there so it's written it to me. So we've got a lot of code there. If I were to do that with Langchain might want to simplify things and make it a bit more generic. It will look something like this. Quite honestly, I've not been able to get this working because there was a problem with Pydantic with this, but this is sort of what you are looking at if you're using Langchain. Let me show you what that now looks like with L. So this is what it looks like with L. So we've literally got two um, strings there as part of a function. So this is one of the core principles that is central to L is that basically you're working with programs rather than strings when you're working with a large language model. So this is known as a language model program. And um, you describe it as two strings. So we've got our system message at the top. We've got our user message after that. And then we can just call it as a function. So you can see we've got this decorator as well that is saying it's just a simple query that we want to make to the OpenAI model. So I've not had to load in OpenAI or anything. It's literally loaded by default. It uses the um, environment variable that I've got set in a .m variable. So if you're actually using environment variable uh, rather than m file, you wouldn't even need this bit of code. Um, so if I go off and run that, I should get something very similar to what I've had. Uh, using OpenAI directly. So you can see in the land of code where pixels gleam, there's a developer known as Ian with fingers that dance and a keyboard stage crafting dreams and lines page by page. That's a very nice uh, view of what I do day to day. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see how much simpler that code is than what we've written in open it well in Langchain for one thing so we've got a similar approach to writing these things functionally I've always found and struggled a bit with this kind of like piping syntax that Langchain uses and so just working with core Python is uh, something of a joy here so the thing you might find a bit strange is this system message we're actually using like a, um, a doc type message there which is you possibly might think is a bit weird. Um, there is another approach that you can use, uh, which I will find. Let's pull open an alternative version. So if we look at this, we can see that actually um, we can explicitly use l.system and l.user if you want to, if you prefer that kind of approach. So yeah, you've got those two different approaches there and both much more simpler than you would have if you were calling out to OpenAI. And it obviously gets rid of a lot of the cruft, uh, one of the things being like digging down into that message. So if we go back to the OpenAI straight completion there, we have to dig down into this message content. There's a lot of boilerplate there that we have to deal with. So L thinks of revisions to these programs, these language model programs, uh, as some as things that should be captured and it's really important that you capture them uh, locally on your system so they provide tooling for you to be able to capture that to a local sql light database so if we do l dot uh, init store and then point it to a particular directory so we're going to say log directory 
and we're going to make it auto commit as well. So if I go off and run that now, what we'll find is within that directory, we have a database as well. So this is really useful because um, basically we get a set of tools that are able to work with that. So there's a thing that they provide which is called L Studio. So if we do L Studio and we use a storage log directory, so the folder that we just written out to, we get this little interface for stuff that's been uh, working locally. So you can immediately see we've got a visual representation of what we've done. If we dig into that, we can see you're a helpful assistant, write a short poem for the developer named name. We can click on that, we can see the response that's come back, and we can see the, the parameters that we're passing in as um, arguments here to the function. We also get over at the side here a bunch of information about the number of tokens that have been used, when it was performed, so really useful things that you probably are not going to be capturing yourself. You might go off into OpenAI and dig around and find those things, but um, t ordinarily you're probably not going to do that. What's really nice about this is, say I change this, so I say let's write a Python tip for a developer named Ian. So if I run that now, we've obviously changed what the the um, user message is so it's still a helpful assistant but now we're writing a python tip for me we'll let it run that we'll get a python tip back in the a terminal um, but more interestingly we get a version 2 of this kicked back in the studio uh, obviously we're still calling it the same function name so that's probably not entirely appropriate but you can see all those um, uh, the same parameters getting captured. We can also see the diff of between what's going on on those things. What's also quite nice, if I can remember where to find it, is if you look at the version history, we can see the commits for this. So it generates messages um, that are stored in that SQL uh, database. They're not actually Git commits, I don't think, even though I think they're shown with a GitHub um, logo. But yeah, so we can see that we updated the user prompt to request a Python tip instead of a poem. So it's using OpenAI GPT 4.0 Mini, I believe in this case, um, and creating a tip, a, a um, commit message from that diff that we've got. So if we look at the invocations, we can also see our invocations over time. Um, I wonder what happens if we change that to write a tip instead. Let's see what that does. So yeah, we can see that if we change the method name that we get a new version, which kind of makes sense that if you're working on methods and you change that, it's the language model function has changed, so it would change the uh, version history as well. So yeah, this is really quite powerful I think like being able to step through your different um, versions of your prompts and as you're kind of iterating locally in order to find that kind of special golden prompt that is the one that gives you everything that you need um, really powerful to be able to have something like this locally running it also gives this really interesting um, example of iterating through a bunch of drafts and piping the output of one into another so we can show that here uh, da, da, da. so this is writing a short story again we are logging this we are using a simple query each time and we're using we're going to write 10 drafts of a story and um, we're going to write choose the best draft so write 10 drafts of a story with GPT-40 mini and then choose the most the best story out of those uh, using GPT-40 so you use the cleverer model in order to choose the best story and so the story we're going to use here is write 10 drafts of a ten, about a 10x developer. So if we run that, we get something interesting on the front end, I promise. So in the web app, I mean. 
So if you do write short story, so I'm making quite a lot of queries over to OpenAI at the moment. Okay, so it's finished. If we refresh this, we can see that we have, so we now have four things in there. So we've got the original functions that we wrote before, the one with the version two. We've also got our write 10 drafts. If we click on that, we can see that we get a load of drafts back and how long that all took and uh, latency and everything like that. And then you can see it's being funneled into this other function. So you get a nice visual representation of this thing funneling into this function, funneling into the next one, which I thought was very cool. So it chooses the best draft. And the best one is... The best draft is in Bussing City of Tech no polis where innovation thrives and code rule the streets there lives a 10x developer named Leela. so there you go if you know somebody called Leela, that is the one that you need to employ you heard it here first so we can see all these uh, queries going on the side there as well this is a nice interface i would imagine this is a brand new project and so it's obviously going to be iterated over time and we're going to see it slightly differently but as as it goes like <laughs> it, it's a really nice start. One of the other things that I have played with and one of their other examples is this um, movie review, which is using structured outputs. So structured outputs are defined like this. It's very similar to how you do it with OpenAI uh, with their structured outputs own, or it is in fact how OpenAI do things, just except for this function call instead. So the response format now is a movie review, which is a pedantic model. And we're just asking it to generate a movie review of June part two. So um, we can run that. And it's obviously a fairly basic completion. Goes on, it's this is you still using 4.0 mini, by the way. Um, and so we get this structured output of something with a title rating and summary and that is also captured in the front end so you can see this isn't necessarily has that been captured and uh, no it hasn't because we aren't logging it so that's fine yeah so it's not um it's not being logged so we haven't put that uh in it to the store there yeah so the kind of tenets of this, I think I really gel with that um, basically anything that you're doing with a large language model is important and it should be captured locally on your machine so that you can backtrack through it, inspect it and decide on whether there's anything potentially you've missed and you can iterate on that and perhaps revert to a previous um, commit. And yeah, we're just using Python models, which is great. That's that's what we want, right? We don't want to have to be dealing with all this weird piping nonsense from uh, Langchain or trying to have to look up 100 different uh, nested dependencies in order to understand documentation. We just want to work with Python. Brilliant. There's also some points on using multimodality, so you are able to use images with this as well, and you can just use Python code in order to interact with those images on your system and punch them up to OpenAI. Another is another kind of um, brilliant way of working. Yeah, so I'm really excited about this. This I'm definitely going to be using this for my own work locally when I'm just toying with. Um, OpenAI it does work with other models and API clients as well. So it's saying it's got provision for Anthropic, um, Career, Grok, and I think those work out of the box even. So I don't think you need to install anything else, but then you're able to specify clients yourself if you want to. So yeah, all in all, brilliant work. Uh, Will, I absolutely love this. Will, I don't even know you. William. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm really looking forward to using this. I found about, out about it yesterday. I'm going to be jumping on it straight away. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments so if you're going to be using this. Um, if you know of anything else that I should be checking out, give me a shout. And um, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. New video. All right, bye for now. Bye.